Hey folks, what's up? Um, well, the audio and video should certainly look a lot better. I'm actually filming this on the Icon D750 and the Sennheiser shotgun microphone. Um, I wanted to talk about something above and beyond being a photographer. First and foremost, I'm a, I'm a philosopher. I'm a Neoplatonic Platonist and metaphysician. Hey, I tell you a neat little story. Some people have asked me to talk about the philosophy a little bit, and I'm going to tell you about something. I translate ancient Greek and I translate ancient Prakrit or Pali. These texts are 2,500 years old. There's literally only a handful of people on earth that can actually translate these. Um, they're incredibly difficult to translate. Um, but first I'd like to talk about uh, something very evil. Now, there's uh, two types of evils in the world. I mean, there's physical evil, like rape, murder, molestation, so on and so forth. And then there's intellectual evil, where you have uh, what I call definition Nazis. Now, these people are not truth seekers. And uh, the, one of the worst places you'll actually find definition Nazis is within religion. Now, I'm not attacking any specific religion, but I'm certainly not an atheist by any means. Uh, I'm not an atheist. By the way, the original definition of atheism back, dates back to the, the Greeks in Philippus 29d, which does not refer to the denial of God or gods, but the denial of, uh, of a noumena, i.e. the substrate to phenomena. Um, but uh, these two things, the great evil, which of course religion is just secularized metaphysics. That's all it is. And people are not truth seekers in general, but you really want to find a group of people that are not truth seekers, all you have to do is just look within religion. These people are very, very close-minded, they're myopic, and I'm not attacking any religion specific, but they operate uh, off, uh, especially uh, intellectual uh, inferiority operates off of the belief that there's such thing as truth by consensus, and then there's another evil, evil notion, and this is uh, peer review. And like I said, along with physical uh, forms of intellectual stupidity, in intellectual forms of abuse like rape, molestation, violence, and so forth, there's intellectual violence, and that's truth by consensus, definition Nazis, and uh, closed-minded uh, evil people that are completely opposed to, uh, you know, actually discovering or comprehending anything. They're completely crow. They're not even truth seekers at all. Anyway, as a 20-year uh, translator of Pali, and I'm a prodigy at translating languages, I mean, at one point in time I was taking five languages at once because it's just so bloody easy. And uh, my professor said I was a prodigy at learning languages, and Russians were like, oh my god, this guy speaks better Russian than we do, is uh, one term. Now, one term in uh, the religion of Buddhism, I said all religion is secularized metaphysics. The original t uh, definition is something different. There is no such thing as Buddhism. I mean, the original founder called it Brahmayana, the path of the absolute, and it was a Neo-Vedantic movement. I mean, it's ridiculous the saying that uh, Jesus hated Jews or something like that. I'm giving you an analogy of uh, what original Buddhism was, is it was a Neo-Vedantic movement. And within his time, even though we're talking 2,500 years ago, Vedanta had become a corrupted bunch of uh, pathetic little rituals. You go onto the Ganges River and, you know, you splash water and all these pathetic existentialist rituals, you know, would bestow holiness or you could do karmic deeds and all, all this stuff was rubbish. And of course, there is no such thing as a religion called Hinduism. I'll get into that in a second. But, uh, you know, the notion that Buddhism, uh, modern Buddhists, okay, and I'm talking about the evil ones, which are basically all of them, they believe that Buddhism was uh, an anti-Hindu movement, which there is no such thing as a religion called Hinduism. And the notion of a soul is completely rejected in Buddhism, which is absolutely not the, not the case in doctrine at all. Just the opposite is actually in the case in doctrine. I mean, I've been, I've been fighting these idiots for 20 plus years. I mean, within the ancient doctrine, it's like, Atasarama, Mamasarama, the soul is a refuge, is none other refuge, Dignike 2.100, or Atyakamiso Saranam Gatika, the soul that I've gone to is a refuge, that would be Jarakapali 14.41, or Saranam uh, Atano, which the passage occurs over and over again, Dignike 2.120, which means the soul is a refuge, or Tata Atta Vasrati. The soul is charioteer. It's an ancient, ancient Egyptian and Indian metaphor that the five horses were the senses, forms, feelings, perceptions, impulses. The chariot was the body and the actual controller, not the human consciousness, but the soul was charioteer. Tata uh, Atta in the ancient Prakrit. But anyway, 
Um, these uh, definition Nazis, which is what I'll call them, and uh, that's a really kind way of talking about them, aren't you Buddhists? Is that they uh, will say themselves, as famous one once said, thus with this doctrine of anatta, which there is no such thing as a doctrine of anatta, stands or falls the entire structure of Buddhism. In other words, they, this one word within Buddhism is so important that if you redefine it, then the entire premise of Buddhism as something unique and autonomous and original completely collapses. Okay? And uh, that, that is the case. They are right about that. <laughs> but the term anatta is a via negativa methodology. is an ancient Greek apophatic methodology whereby which when it comes to subjective assimilation or subjective synthesis through objective negation. It's like, well, how do you find a needle in a haystack? Well, you don't go searching through the haystack for the needle. You know, hey, it burns. You light a match. Poof, it's all gone. There's the needle. It is the same expedient methodology. It is an ontological methodology of, obje of subjective assimilation by means of objective negation. Okay? So you're saying uh, Rupa Anatta, Veda Anatta, Sankara Anatta, Vinyana Anatta. You're saying these 22 things are not myself, not my soul. The term Anatta is never used in standalone. It, it, it is only used as a pejorative uh, adjective in reference to, you know, form is not my soul, feelings are not my soul. Now, as is the case, modern Buddhists are as evil and stupid as is the common person. They're always confusing oneself with another. Like the person you see in the stupid camera, this fat, ugly, tattooed person, is the persona non grata. Okay? That would be like, for example, the radio. I could say, the radio is not, my, not the signal, the tubes aren't the signal, the antenna is not the signal. It's like, well, I smash the radio, there's no signal there, therefore there is no signal. No, 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 no. You know, <laughs> that's not the case. You say, here's this piece of crap called a radio. It's got tubes and wires and this and that. None of these things are the signal. Okay, there is no soul within the body. The body has no soul. So has implies possession, of course. This is the premise of the ancient Greek Pythagoreans, the Platonists, the Neoplatonists, Demetrius, Plotinus, Numinus, Albinus, Proclus, and the rest, and the ancient Indies. All of this is a form of monism. But... What you have here is you have 1,500 years of crap covering uh, this ancient jewel of wisdom, and Buddhism is not original, it was just nothing other than a Neo-Vedantic movement. But I'll say something that's going to found, sound very egotistical, but is very true. When it comes to the definition of this one word, anatta, or anatman in Sanskrit, in Sanskrit, I am God. Okay? There is nobody else on this earth that comes within a thousand miles of what I know about this one particular word. Nobody. Nobody comes close. I've debated the best, the best, so to say, Trapelli translators on earth like Bhikkhu Bodhi and the rest of them, and they've all backed down. Every one of them's backed down. I've read all their translations. I know the stuff that they hide. I know the purposeful errors that they make. There's one place that you can never rely on a secondary source, i.e. a commentarialist. I mean, I don't care if you're a Catholic and you're offended by this, but it's like saying to someone, well, the Pope said, well, look at the damn what the Pope said. What does the Bible say now? You know, I'm just using this as an example. It's like, well, the Pope's a secondary source. Now, let's get into, I've actually always, for fun, always re-edited with countless citations the Wikipedia. Wikipedia, by the way, is one of the most evil websites on the Internet. If you want to know, go there and, and know who J-Lo's newest uh, husband is, that's fine. But when it comes to uh, doctrinal, um, metaphysical, uh, specifically, not quantitative metaphysics, but denotative metaphysics. We're talking about ancient Pythagorean and uh, Pythagoreanism and Platonism. It is one of the worst and evil places to go to. Now, this is Wikipedia's own policy. Policy. Material requires a secondary source for interpretation. In other words... It does. It requires a commentarialist instead of the original source. Yeah, oh yeah, this is according to Wikipedia. You have to refer to a reliable secondary source. You know, that means I have to rely on some asshole commentarialist with an agenda? Well, there's no place worse than uh, for that, getting the truth, than uh, when it comes to uh, religious texts. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. It's like, uh, you know, if I were a Catholic and... I was listening to the Pope instead of listening to the Bible. I'm just using that as an analogy. I'm not a Catholic or anything like that. Wikipedia articles, blah, 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 blah. Reliable secondary sources. There are no reliable secondary sources a la religion. Religion is just secularized metaphysics. And this is from me, of course. 
So in other words, you can't actually state anything in Wikipedia. Now, I used to have fun. I'd always re-edit the, the article for Ramata over and over, hundreds of times over the past 20, well, I don't know, 15 years or so. And you'll have these people that have paid. Yes, you do. You used to be able to pay for them on eBay. Become, uh, uh, you know, a big, wig at Wiki, a big wig at Wikipedia where you can become play God and you would not let anybody actually enter in an accurate definition of something. So what you do is you have these definition Nazis. And uh, Buddhism actually has on Wikipedia's board, the same as every other religion, they have definition Nazis. And what they do is they lurk. And if anybody changes an article, even though you've got the citation and you've got the original Prakrit there, and these assholes don't know how to translate Pali. I mean, they can barely speak English. They certainly don't know how to translate. They will, boom, they'll bring it back. And you'll say, well, no, this is a citation, and this is what it says. And, and no, boom. And so you have these definition Nazis. So you actually can't enter in anything valid. On Wikipedia, I've always known was an evil website, so I just do it for giggles and fun now. And they'll ban you for a week or something, and I'll pop in with a, a, new, um, uh, a new ISP number, and then I'll change it again. So I cause them endless frustration. But, I mean, the same exists uh, within places like Britannica. Britannica doesn't go to the original source. They, they rely on these second, those yellow robe people in Thailand, Laos, and Burma. Those people that are bald and wear the yellow saffron robes, those are the Theravadins. They used to be called Saravasti Vadins. Now, to get into the short of it here, Saravasti Vadin literally translates as nihilist. So it literally means Sarave Vasti Vada, or Save Vasti Vada, which means this is all there is, ism, which means materialism. So, all those people that you think are Buddhists with the yellow robes in Thailand, Laos, and Burma, and Ceylon, they're Buddhists in name only. They're actually Theravadins, and the Theravadins used to be called, ages ago, Sarawasti Wadins, which literally, from uh, Pali to English, means materialists, which is, means this is all there is, ism. In other words, phenomena, all this crap is all there is. That's not a religion. It's not even a metaphysics. Uh, <laughs> um, but if you actually read the Encyclopedia Botanica article for the term anatta, remember, the entire basis of Buddhism revolves around this one word, anatta. And this is how stupid the world is. Uh, but I've been dealing with this for 20 years, and I found a way around it. I'll tell you that in the second video here. If you go to Botanica, the article, the definition for anatta, it says, anatta means no self, Sanskrit anatman. In Buddhism, the doctrine is that the humans have no permanent underlying substance can be called the soul. Instead, the individual is uh, composed of five factors, or khandas. Composed, uh, they're constantly changing. The concept of anatta or anatman is a departure from Hindu belief in the Atman. There's not even a single doctrinal passage in any translation that gives substantiation for this crap. Well, that's the Encyclopedia Britannica. It has to be accurate. You know, oh my God. People are so, the world is so evil and stupid. Now, let's get to the second point, and I'll go on to the second video. There's no such thing as a religion called Hinduism. Hinduism has never prepared a body of canonical literature, or scriptures, or prayer book, or anything. Hinduism recur, uh, comes from the word Sindhu, or the Indo-Aryan word for the sea. It refers to a peoples of a region on the east of the Indus uh, River Valley. The word Hinduism has no connection to any specific religion at all, but to a peoples and an area. From the point of view of uh, religion, the Vedantic uh, literature divides itself into two parts, the Rig Veda, Samba Veda, yada, 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 you are interested in this. But specifically what this means is that the notion of Hinduism, and we use that term today, but there's no such thing as a religion called Hinduism. It refers to a peoples, okay? And their beliefs are variegated. Now, I'm not interested in beliefs, I'm actually interested in hardcore... <laughs> People think that uh, religion and metaphysics is a departure from science and logic. Now, religions are, but metaphysics and true platonic ontology is not. Let me go into the second video, and I'll tell you how I got around that, because, you know, despite my looks, I'm actually a pretty smart critter. 